What's up guys? Welcome back to the Montyverse. We are here to check out the season finale of Secret Invasion and I am pumped. What about you, Nikki? I am very pumped. I've been loving this whole series so far. I just hope so badly that it sticks the landing now. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Jumping into episode six of Secret Invasion Home right now. A lot of stakes. A lot of stakes. Not talking about beef. But that would be pretty tasty. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Man, that was such a great scene they, when they just like took them all the hell yeah, out. Yeah, that was badass. First time you called this number in years. I have dialed this number <laughs> a million times. <laughs> this is just the first time I press send. Aww. You sound far away, are you? Far enough to where it makes sense to keep going the way I'm going. Know if you'll be coming back? Oh. Um, all right, I'll, uh, I'll let you go now. You don't have to if you don't want to, darling. Oh, I actually really love this relationship. I know! Their dynamic is so sweet, but I love the intensity to it, given just kind of their background with everything that's happened and how they even got together in the first place. I love how she's draped in light and he's drenched in shadow. Mm-hmm. Great framing. Say yeah. Whoa, it's Sue Storm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So wait, had he just like, how did he get the car to get that far without anyone in it? He probably put like a brick on the steering wheel or but something. From how from how far away? I don't know, he's Nick Fury. In your response to the attack on your motorcade. President Vladimov has strenuously denied responsibility. Oh, he strenuously denied it, then I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> President Vladimov is a bald-faced liar and I've got 30 dead Russians on a motorway to prove it. Did you take Scrully a stupid your breakfast this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Orchestrated by the Skrulls and the Russians who are giving them safe haven, which is present the President of the United States with his options for a military response to Russia. Dang. The Russian tanks taking positions on the Finland and Ukrainian border. I've taken the liberty to prepare a rough copy of your remarks to the nation. They need to understand who's responsible for this. And it's the Russians, 100%. There's your proof right there. Or don't. That is also an option. Or just don't, dude. Oof. What a kill that was. Yep. Oh my God. Well, I guess those are all the people he killed in I that know. big fight scene. But it's, it's, it, I didn't realize it was that many. Me neither. <laughs> this dude is just taking in so much radiation right now. Hello? You have to get him out of there. Who? The president, you bloody idiot. <laughs> <laughs> take it straight for you. Why are we concerned about Fury? We got enough security for him. Fury's lost it. He wants rich and stop before the bomb is launched. Move the president now. <laughs> <laughs> they got a plan. There's a plan. <laughs> oh gosh, he looks like crap. <laughs> he looks great though. I know. And he looks very unken like. Hi, Barbie! Lost the way. Like it's just you and me, Fury. <laughs> All out pills. That's a shame, isn't it? No more protection for you. How about a drink instead? I wouldn't say no. I don't know if I would blindly accept that. For the that. last stand of the great Nick Fury. Oh, Rudy he's Ray. playing him so hard. Uh, wow. Upstairs. What about the rest of the men, sir? Tell them to start hunting. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't laugh at that. It's just like, that was too easy well, for them to be taken down. Uh, she didn't kill him. They very I, clearly got tranked. I know, but I'm just saying that was still too easy. I know. Well, it's Sonya Fallsworth. She's like British Fury. It's once the shake and gets above the elbow, close to the heart. That's when you need to be concerned. So what does that make Val? She's the head of the CIA. Oh. Fury, tell I'm me you got a backup plan. Fury. Makes your Julia Louis Dreyfus. What about that invisible cloak and shield? <laughs> Lynn, 
Hmm. Dress up. Using my skin like a costume. A costume, Fury. Do you not recognize this skin? This face. This was the first human I killed. And you know why I killed him? I killed him because you told me to. You don't even remember. The first mission you sent me on. I wanted to give everything to impress my hero. You know, the one who promised us a home. This man, Fury, he had a wife. And he had children. Yeah, all right, maybe he was a bit misguided. But I killed him because of you. And everyone I killed took a little piece out of my heart. Talos was weak. And we wandered in the shadows for 30 so years. So good. He turned the war people into a band of beggars. And what, I'm supposed to emulate that? Be like Talos and put my trust in you. You pimped us, Fury. And when you were done with us, you threw us away. So first, I'm going to kill you. And then I'm going to take a flamethrower to humanity. Look at me. You did this. That is all you. They were condemned to die the day I realized you weren't a man of your word. You really should have kept your promise. You, you, you're right, I, I failed you. Within a few years of searching that there was no other planet out there. The only way for me to keep my end of the bargain was to build your home here. Why didn't you do it? Because it's easier to save the lives of eight billion people than it is to change their hearts and minds. Even for Nick Fury. Even for Nick Fury. And then the blip came. You know, the last thing I felt for, I flaked dog. What's that? Relief. Relief that I didn't have to fight anymore. Wow. That I finally had a way out. Dark. You right? I wasn't brave. Do you know why I came back to Earth? You. You were the youngest scroll on my team. I felt responsible for you. I should have taught you that you never give up the fight. Because I failed you and failed your people, I have decided to give you what you want. Is that what I think it is? Is that a different color than it was? Denver's DNA. It was like greenish. Along with but that's clear. That well, maybe just the lighting. The maybe it's not the harvest. In exchange mm. for what? Take your powers, go to some other planet, wipe out some other species. I don't just leave Earth the hell alone and leave it now. Call off the strike and save your people. I think the radiation's eating your brains, mate. <laughs> Watch him just drop it. Never mind. Never mind, but that was way too easy. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine he just gave him some like rank ass DNA. He gave him like a poodle DNA. I thought you were gonna say something like water or something. That's true, but what if he becomes a water person? Like Hydro Man. Give me your gun, goddammit. Or Namor. It's classified. Whatever that is. It looks so much like a mini fridge. I'm sorry. <laughs> or a microwave. That is definitely <laughs> a microwave they turned into a prop 100%. Oh, Korg! It's pure. Good more, winter soldier. You really want to die. Okay, you can move him in here. Ooh, no busted. No behind the doors. You really are a scrub. <laughs> no <laughs> buts. Just yours back into the hallway, go on. <laughs> oh, wow. What if that's not Fury? There's a decent wow. chance. Oh my gosh, what if that's, uh... What if that's Gaia? And he did this so that she would become a super scroll. Wait, hold on. Like a second before I ha you might want to aim that gun to your left, sir. I'm not here to hurt you, sir, but he is. You killed my mother, my father. Oh, <laughs> you're flailing, you're weak. <laughs> oh, Drax, <laughs> little Drax arm. Oh, invisible! Oh, ghost. That's but ghost. That's under. That is. I guess that is. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is a scroll. 
Crow. It's going to kill the man he's replicating along with some of the world's greatest minds. Crow rebels have kidnapped dozens of world officials and other world officials are being kept in pods beneath the Skrull compound. Please tell me this isn't true. Are you listening to this insanity? Of course it isn't true. Oh, call, uh, Ebony Maw. Oh, Hulk leg. Mr. President, listen, just stay the course. All our enemies will be gone. Yeah. Oh my God, that, uh, he's bombing them. You're looking at your enemy. <sighs> So like, oh, Captain oh. Marvel! Oh! oh. <laughs> so like, are they just inherently aware of all the power sets they have now? Oh yeah, and, I'm sure they are. And they can just rotate through them? Just delay the strike. If I'm wrong, you can send me to prison and flatten Russia. Guy is oh. badass. Okay, that looks awesome. Oh. Just like your father. Just like them. No. Oh. oh man. It's a bummer because I really like Gravik. I know, but... Oh! Jesus, somebody give me the phone. Yeah, you got played, bro. Yeah. Like, hurry the hell up. Terrible president. <laughs> Terrible president. Brody. He's in a hospital. Did they snatch him right after Civil War? Civil War? <gasps> He's still in the hospital gown. I oh, know. Oh, it's Ross. <laughs> Colonel Rose? Is, is that what... When, that wouldn't have been when we last saw him, though, was it? But this is not. Whoa, Colonel Rhodes, I've got you. His legs don't work again. Mm. You've been held hostage for a long time. <sighs> for a long time. We all witnessed the terror attack that was carried out on my motorcade earlier this week in England where a shape-shifting alien-born species known as Skrulls build that designates all off-world-born species enemy combatants. We know who you are. We know how to find you. And we will kill every last one of you. Oh, the exact opposite of what Tal Talos wanted. You returned. Love what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> I could take care of myself. I know that. <laughs> But you shouldn't have to. I know who I am when you're not here. It's when you come back that I start to wonder, did you fall in love with me or the face that puts you at ease? I love you, Priscilla. Here to ask you for one last chance. I'm leaving tonight. Then I guess this is goodbye. You can find a way to forgive me. You know where to find me. I mean, he also didn't call her by her original name. Their dialogue is so wonderful. She's a Super Saiyan scroll. What are you gonna do, Dur? Imagine if that he was one of them. Super Saiyan. Then she'd Unless be for real unstoppable. Unless you have an army in the back of that car, I advise you to go back the way you came. <laughs> <laughs> With your special abilities, it would be a lopsided affair. Who are you? A friend of a friend. Your people need a leader. You all need resources to fight this war that Ritson has launched on your people, and I can give them to you. Yes, well, let's be sure not to repeat the mistakes of Talos and Fury and leave love and friendship out of this. Interesting. The British Avengers, <laughs> which I guess is the second British Avengers because of the, the TV show, which obviously there are multiple British Ooh. superhero teams. I was relieved that we made it out alive. Till I watched that hateful ass speech you made. Oh. Putting things back together was never going to be easy. What the hell is all this? This is how the enemy got so good. What the you what? took a bad situation and made it worse. It's real one term president stuff. <laughs> But we have to act now. Oh God! Squad, you inspired. Kill off the scrolls who still want to help us. Now you got dumbass vigilantes killing innocent humans. Oh! When they're not getting killed themselves. <laughs> Call off your war. Give me a break. There's only one way this ends. The old Nick Fury would have known that. If you truly care about the scrolls, get off my planet. Oh gosh! So he's just a jerk.
Mm-hmm. Two for two this year. MCU's got some bad precedents. <laughs> oh, she came. Oh. Sounds like peace. It's all I want. Priscilla. Bara. Now that humans know we're among them, I'd like to use my birth name. Mm. The Cree say they're open to peace talks with the Skrulls. Mm. The Cree uh. make peace. That's interesting. Reminds me of that old joke. What do Skrulls call good luck? Bad luck. Stop it. <laughs> it's a good thing. I need your help. My help? Hell, with this, you know, this peace summit. You're the best diplomat the Skrulls have ever had. You've got your own way. Yeah, I'm sick of it. And we're better together. Well, at least I am. <laughs> <laughs> at least he admits it. Please, come with me. We get started. But then I've got to get back. All my work is here, darling. And it's never been more important. Aww. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that, that I love you as I am. Only as you are. Aww. Is this the best love story in the MCU? I mean, it's, not, it's great, but <laughs> there's still Peggy and Steve. <laughs> Which is oh, shoot, yeah. one of the greatest love stories ever. This is very close, so it's very good. If you would have told me this is how Secret Invasion was going to end, I would have never believed you. <laughs> oh yeah, Nick Fury kisses a scroll and the camera swings around. <laughs> That's it? I know. That's what we're doing? Wait, well, wait. There has to be a post credit straight scene, right? Because the... the yeah. I guess not. It's uh -huh. a very bittersweet ending to the series uh -huh. because you could say that the secret invasion technically has just begun almost. Yeah. Like, so I think I'm also a little confused. So what was it that Sonia and Gaia found at the end with all those people? Were those just more people who were kidnapped? And Well, Talos said, you know, there's a million scrolls on Earth. Right. So that those are scroll sleeper agents. That's to let you know, like, Hey, their scrolls, even the scrolls don't know about, you know? Right. Where were all those people? Where was that, though? Probably in England, I guess. Or, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. So, I guess, you know? And how how did Sonia and Gaia know about it? I mean, they just found them. Uh, oh, so it's like just something that Sonia Intel, to find. yeah. Or just in, Intel or um, maybe one of the people they rescued from the facility had a memory of that or mm -hmm. there's a million different ways. I, I think you could hand wave that and, okay. and that's fine. Um, we don't need to explain everything to death. No, which I don't think they should have. I was just curious because the impact of that shot was fantastic. I just didn't want to make sure I missed anything. Yeah. Um, Okay, before we talk about the end, we should probably talk about the episode as a whole. Yes, uh, I was gonna say, like, the episode and then maybe the series as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it was a re I think it was a really, it's a, it was a simple but strong finale. I mostly agree. Um, I, I, I think it's actually has a lot more weaknesses than some of the other episodes, even though I think it had a great impact and greater impact than some of them. It, it's less, well, because this is, the, as, as with most of these, MCU shows, I think the problem, well, I shouldn't say problem, I think the way they're designed is that the final episode is always like, like the climax of the movie. So yeah. you can't have the nuance and the dialogue scenes that you would have in the other episodes because really you need to resolve. Uh, oh, that's not my issue at all. What's your issue? My issue is, um, and I said this even before going in, I appreciate that the show, and I guess this applies every episode, doesn't feel the need to stretch itself out. Like, it's not afraid, like, hey, if we are only a half hour each, then that's fine. It's like, you know, I appreciate that. They're not just prolonging things for no reason. But damn, do I wish there was more. And I sp specifically wish there was more to that climactic fight, actually. Yeah, it, 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 this series felt short <laughs> to me. Like, when we saw the runtime, I got nervous. I'm like, oh man, the last three episodes were a half hour each. Yeah. Um, and I think for something as important and universe changing as the Secret Invasion event was in the comics, I feel like this should have been a little bit more grander in scale mm -hmm. and scope. Whereas, yes, we're told of that a lot, but it's a very, it's for the most part, a very grounded and mm -hmm. small series, which I don't really mind, but the ending was kind of, 
I feel like the ending introduced concepts to me that we were going to see throughout this entire series. Mm -hmm. Like the end, like the ending where Ritson gives that speech, it's it's dangerously realistic yeah. to things that have happened in the real world. And these themes of, you know, acceptance that were littered throughout the final episodes and throughout sprinkled throughout the series as a whole, yeah, uh, I think would have played a lot better if we got more of that instead of it just being like a cloak and dagger show. Well, that's the problem is I, as that scene was going on, I thought, wow, this is great stuff. Oh, it kind of sucks it's being restricted to a montage at the end. Like that to me was so intriguing because it was so dark and so realistic. And this, this is the problem, like me and you said it, like the problem is we're humanity and humanity has a hard time with acceptance, especially for things that they hate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Obviously, that that's not all of humanity. Like there are tons of good people. The the major the normal person is very accepting, I should say. But then there are you know the those people that are very unaccepting of things that are different. Mm -hmm. Especially when the president goes on the air and tells them like these people bad. Yeah. You know these things bad, and it's so intriguing to me. And then to throw that in as like a a five second montage at the end of the episode, I feel like this does it a little bit of a disservice. Mm -hmm. Unless there's, to me, th there has to be a follow-up to this because so many things were hinted at and teased that there's just no, I have no idea where they could show up next. Well, the, yeah, and that's the biggest thing is you now have Gaia who has the DNA and is a super scroll. And I think the, sh the franchise would be damned to not utilize her anymore. She's insane. She's so insanely powerful. I, I just, she has Captain Marvel's powers and the Hulk and Ebony Maw. She's like, oh, we just created someone that has no flaws essentially, like can handle any situation by themselves. That's a very dangerous precedent, like... Yeah, but I mean, it's knowing the MCU, it's going to keep escalating, though. It um, was really cool to see to the two Super Scrolls fight it out. It was, um, and like, that was cool. I, I think it was probably intentionally disconcerting how it looked, though. Um, I, I think there was a little few moments where it's like it looked a little bit too weird. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how the Super Scrolls look. So I, they went with more comic accuracy, which I loved. Um, uh, I also love that they used the abilities at hand to create a Fantastic Four Super Scroll. We <laughs> thought it was going to be the, the four abilities that Gravik originally had, which in a way it was. But she used ghosts and visibility mm -hmm. to create the Sue Storm stuff, which I feel like there were a lot of hints to Susan Storm <laughs> this episode. Yeah. Um, so Fantastic Four is coming. Groot, uh, they use they used uh, Call Obsidian's mm -hmm. skin as the thing, and then the Captain Marvel photon, uh, the Captain Marvel binary form or energy form as the fi as the Human Torches. Yeah. Flames. Yeah, and all that was really cool, but like if there was ever a scene I actually wish was a little more bombastic and over the top, that fight scene would have been it. I, to be honest with you, I was actually shocked with how much CGI they invested into it. I thought it would have been shorter. <laughs> I thought mm -hmm. like logistically, as a fan, yeah, I wanted more. I wanted the whole episode to be that fight because Gravik mm -hmm. also kind of went out like a like a B word. Yeah. But, um, and here's what I here's what I hated the most about the climax of the fight. While I think it was fitting that his demise came after he insulted Talos, yeah, um, and I think that was fitting. It felt so abrupt, and I and again, eh, I, don't, I don't like she's like, like he insulted him and boom, she blasted. Well, lackluster. Yeah. It felt like yeah. Okay, um, that's probably a better word. I don't think it felt abrupt because I felt like they were building to it because he insulted mm -hmm. Talos multiple times. Yeah, that's uh, fair. And so, I, obviously, she was gonna kill him, but uh, it's it's a shame because mm. to me, Kingsley Benadire proved again in this episode how amazing he is. Oh yeah, that monologue with with Fury mm -hmm. was so damn good. Right. Well, this is what I was almost thinking, considering the runtime. Part of me was wondering, oh, are we probably just not gonna get a fight, and is this gonna be a thing where like they not. I don't want to say talk it out like, oh, they're going to like resolve things, but like it would be a less action focused finale, which I think would have fit the series. And I think that monologue was definitely an even more peak moment than the fight. See, this is the problem. That's Naruto. <laughs> and Nick Fury doesn't know talk no jutsu. 
okay? Uh, Nick Fury only knows espionage. So yeah, I, I, I felt like there was a plan there. I, it's just, I was trying to put the pieces together and then it finally clicked. Yeah. When Fury didn't leave the chamber, I'm like, oh, okay, this is the plan. Right. This is the plan. This is what we're it, doing. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I think at that point, it at least tracked that um, freaking Gravik was probably feeling cocky enough and like superior over him that he didn't consider that possibility. Also a pretty big risk, right? Like yeah. it's a sent you're essentially pinning one against the other. So it could have gone either way. Yes. And, and if Gaia loses, then you're screwed. Gravik is essentially an um, like super powerful being. That That's what I figured too. But I will say in this kind of scenario where they were kind of tight on time, it's like I could see this in a moment of desperation being what he thought was the best solution. So yeah, it's like that was risky as hell. But I think at least made sense strategically. Or maybe Fury gave her notes on all of the powers and abilities she was getting. Yeah. So that- She had the upper hand. She would be more like, cause she used Mantis's ability, mm -hmm. which um, in my head, I was like, was Mantis even in the final fight? And she was. Mm -hmm. uh, I, cause in Endgame, I just had to piece together <laughs> who was there. And I'm like, oh, she's definitely there. Um, she comes through that portal. Yeah. But that was, I love seeing that. Mm -hmm. Mantis's abilities and a lot of surprise abilities showed up for like a split second in that mm -hmm. fight. But again, like you said, I wish it was, I also wish it was longer. Yeah. So I'm so conflicted. Um, to your knowledge, were there like constraints on the show? Like but whether it was budget or if like at this point it's not COVID or strength, but any reason why you think they went for such a short run time? Uh, no, not that I'm not that I'm aware of. I don't know any behind the scenes drama like there was in a lot of the other shows mm -hmm. that they were, you know, they had to change storylines because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Loki became a lot smaller of a series due to COVID. Uh, they, they had to shoot in more sets um, and closed in locations. But yeah, I don't know about any of that here. I think this is just a story they wanted to tell, which is why it feels linearly concise like as a, as a whole as a story right it feels very focused and concise mm -hmm. but it, it just it's i want more like i feel like it's, yes if even if they add an, an extra episode that was the same length it's like okay that maybe would have at least expanded yeah i think this is the problem there's such a there's such a focus on the six episode mm -hmm. series now because that's like they're, 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 they're we gotta hit six, we gotta hit six. Yeah. With these series that are longer, like She Hulk was shorter, so it got nine. Right. But I love that, and I love She Hulk. And yeah, I don't think She Hulk like needed any editing at all. She Hulk was great, and I don't care what any of you think. It's it was it's awesome, one of the best MCU properties. But the fact that we keep doing these like six episode series, and some yeah. of them feel too long, and some of them feel too short, <laughs> maybe we should just write. <laughs> Maybe we should just do what feels right yeah. for the story we're trying to tell. Well, that's what I'm grappling with is this is the first time I think it drastically fell too short. So I feel like there had to be some extent to where this was the intention, which again, I appreciate that. Hey, at least they were trying something different and they didn't f feel tied to the idea of they had to expand everything to be as long yeah. as and epic as possible. So, because and I brought this up to you last night. I've been talking about every week how much I love this series, and I it blows my mind how poorly it's doing critically. And I the unjustly poorly. I don't think it it deserves any of the uh, hate it's been well, getting. Well, and the main criticism I saw, unless there's some that I missed, was a lot of people considering the dialogue overblown and too expository. And I'm like, what? That's one of the strengths of the show to I, me. Because these people just want like MCU punch them ups, like quip, they're used to the quippy, quick dialogue of the MCU. So when you have Priscilla or Vara giving these beautiful so like soliloquies. Yeah, but then if you do the same, then people complain too. Exactly, so. because the MCU can't win. We're at a state where it's very hard to be a fan of a well, comic book property. I also just find it concerning, like, people also can't, we're at a point where people can't even be happy for other properties without being like, yeah, and it was so much better than a superhero movie or the MCU. It's like, why don't we just celebrate everything? And if you don't want to watch something, you don't have to watch All it. All right, Nikki, get off your soapbox because we got so much more to talk about about this episode. <laughs> Fair um, enough, but either way, 
I disagree. Even though this episode has some flaws, I still love the series. Yeah, because this is what... See, I'm so conflicted because as a series, I love this show. Yeah. I, I But it should have been called like the Nick Fury show. Yeah. Because... I loved all the Fury stuff. I loved the Fury and Var stuff. I think that was a very well told story and it was beautiful and it had a beautiful ending and it felt natural and they both felt like they stayed in character yeah. and they made decisions based off of who they are as people. Mm. And I, I loved every second of that. But as a whole, to me as a comic fan, to use the name Secret Invasion and tend to give us a series this small yeah. that doesn't really change it essentially makes Earth the way that, like, every country... It makes the Earth as a whole <laughs> prejudice against alien species now. Yeah, because... the Which is fine, but I feel like that should, like... Because, again, like, then you look at the ending where, where you have all of these mass killings happening and none none of the heroes that are active are doing anything. Like, Sam Wilson, like, I really hope that we... Well, re, like to cover this because he is Captain America. Yeah, and I'll say like in people's defense, if it's more of a new phenomenon and like people are just kind of doing it more on the low key, then okay, I'm not gonna expect like every Avenger to anticipate all of that. But I do think you're right that hopefully it will be addressed in future installments as it becomes like a greater I don't want to call it phenomenon, but more p that it's. It's clearly like it is an actual hate crime inspired by people's discrimination of the scrolls. So yeah. I think, like you said, it'll come up, but I I can understand like why it's not being immediately addressed. Yeah, and obviously, we're getting some sort of scroll task force. Like, it's so weird to tease. The, like, I'm branching this. It's so weird to tease the Gaia and Sonya stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because that the clear implication is that we will see these people again in some sort of series. Oh yeah. But is it going like? Are we gonna get like an Excalibur? series which is like all british heroes yeah um i, I don't know because, well at this point it's like there's also we know that the marvels immediately follow they're this. not gonna be that i am 100 percent sure they will not be in that yeah so there's gonna be time before this comes up again which is kind of how it's always operated though like it's, it's just weird are they going to be a part of some british superhero team involving <laughs> blade and the black knight yeah. Which will be interesting to see Kit Harrington and Amelia yeah. Clark uh, oh on God. screen together. Uh, but those are all British based mm -hmm. heroes that we're establishing in the MCU. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, for people who only know him from the Spider Man cartoon, Blade will be British um, in the MCU. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, but, like, I guess in terms of thoughts on the overall series, I'm with you. I thought overall it was fantastic. I'm, I'm with you on Fury and Vara's dynamic. I loved his and Talos' dynamic. Bromance. Like, that's... And I think that's definitely... It's disappointing what happened, but I think that was a huge highlight. And again, I think a lot of the dialogue is, even if it was expository at times, was really strong. Yeah. You know what's the worst thing that happened? What? Marie Hill's actually dead, and that's messed up. Yeah. That's dark. I know. That's... It kind of feels like, you know, I don't want to say she died for nothing, but it kind of feels like she died for nothing. Well, well, she died for the purposes of the plot, which I guess... Which is not great. No. But, uh, you had to do something, I guess? Yeah. Um, and I'm not even going to say you had to make us do something to hate uh, Gravik, because Gravik is very easily hateable well, um, without that first death. Well, what I loved a lot, and I think a lot of this is due to Kingsley's performance, is the fact that it escalated, because... At first, because at the time that he kills Maria, like he's kind of just colder. We at this point we're not, we don't know as much about his backstory. And then, like as we learn, and things get like progressively more heated. And then he has his big moment in the fifth episode where he just lashes out. And yeah. it's like there's no going back. And he's from just that. a scared little boy. At the end of the day, he was just scared. Right. That actually, real quick, and that's another thing is when he talks about how he was deputized by Fury to kill. It's like that was fascinating, but <clears> I can at least kind of see from the point of view, like, okay, I wish we could have gotten more into that too. Um, I mean, I think we got as far into it as we needed to. He was, I mean, we saw the flashback that he became an operative at a very young age, yeah. and they were running spy missions. Right. I get. He's that's, like Jason Bourne, but little and green. That's true. Little green. I guess it's like because that was all the way in the beginning of episode two. It's like, wow, that was a while ago. Yeah. But you're right, though. It did connect back to that. 
I, I think overall as the ser as a series, I like I said, I enjoyed it. Yes. But with secret, with, like again, I, I was expecting something a little bigger, more bombastic. Mm -hmm. But I like what we got. Yeah. So yes. I'm so conflicted. Uh, but overall, I really, for me, if I had to grade this based off of series alone without the name Secret Invasion, <laughs> I would give this very. High <clears throat> Excuse me, I would give this a very high score. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, as an MCU fan and as a fan of connected interconnectivity uh continuity, I don't know. I feel I feel like I I can see how we're gonna pivot off of this. Obviously, mm -hmm. Ritson's not gonna get reelected, his hateful ass is getting out of office, and we're right. getting Thunderbolt Ross. Uh and that's assuming he doesn't get killed before then. Um that's true. But I can see how we're pivoting, and mm -hmm. I wonder if this is going, this thread's going to get picked up in New World Order, oh, yeah. or Brave New World, I'm sorry, that mm -hmm. um, it, it's called now, because I can't see Sam not having an opinion on this. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's what is kind of interesting, is when they find ways to connect the properties that at on the outset don't seem like they're going to be, like, because this is preceding the Marvels, but... Other than Fury, it's not going to have as yeah. direct of an impact. And I'm sure that uh, now Armor Wars is going to be tie very heavily into this. Oh, yeah. Especially because in actuality, Rhodey himself was not that big a part of this series, but he there was a huge impact on Skrelly him. Screlly was. Yeah. It's weird because I, the, the how I interpreted it was mm -hmm. they snatched Rhodey up mm -hmm. in civil war what do you mean in, that's what i'm confused about what do you mean by a after the accident after sam so tucks and rolls vision blast war machine war machine collapses he's paralyzed or he's partially paralyzed so you're saying infinity or endgame fury was scrolly uh Rhodey. oh Infinity, I, that's what I'm thinking because he's in a hospital gown. And when's the only time in the MCU that we've seen him in a hospital gown okay. that we are aware of? Shoot. And that's in Civil War because everyone was in the clothes that they were captured in. So you're saying that from Civil War in 2016 to now it's 2024, that in the in the intervening years, that was scrolly the entire time. I, th I think that's what they're implying because his legs didn't work. And he seemed like... Is there no possibility the scrolls and kidnapping him like just re-paralyzed him? They re okay, that's dark. Re-paralyzed okay. him. But again, it doesn't explain the hospital gown, right? Because maybe, maybe they put him in a hospital gown intentionally. The wardrobe department... Like, that's a choice. That's not like an accent. Oh, he acts. He just happened to be wearing a hospital gown. Well, I'm just, There's intention there. Right. I, I'm just trying to think of the timeline. So prior to this series, we, we last saw him in Falcon the Winter Soldier, I believe. Uh, yeah. Okay. And he was walking just fine. Yeah, yeah. Which well, bothered me. Well, at that point, we assumed that was him, though. Um, I had my doubts. I was like, this guy is probably scroll. Um... But did you ever suspect it during Infinity War and Endgame? No, but that's kind of the point, right? Yeah, that's... Uh, that's, that... that's the, the point. Oh, that's insane. Because think about it realistically, in, in the grand scheme of things, you when the, when the world superheroes are coming into conflict, mm -hmm. that's when Rhodey starts accruing the, the um, amassing larger power than he's ever had before. He's always been a a colonel in the military right and then he switched over into politics after post-civil war mm -hmm. right because he became uh, uh like a like an, a standing member of the avengers mm -hmm. and then he signed the sokovia accords so yeah we want that guy like yeah. oh yeah let's let's get someone in there oh man that's dark it's oh this uh, the only thing i don't like about is now it's gonna like mess with how i watch infinity war and endgame now the scroll that means he 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 wasn't there for his best friend's death i know and i don't like that or now is there also a possibility that the real roadie maybe did get dusted and there is a strong possibility ah uh, now is there any other characters that you think that would have now applied to or is he like kind of the only one we have mm. any evidence of well no um i right. think he's the only one at least major character yeah so. Major characters. I mean, obviously, it's not Tony Stark because he didn't yeah. turn into a scroll. Like anyone who's dead, obviously <laughs> right. not that. Uh, but 
I don't know. I guess that's the point. It makes you wonder, right? Oh, that messes wonder. that messes with my head so much right now. So thanks for that. And that would also be a good way to lead into armor and give us a tight tighter story for Armor Wars because yeah. now he's got this guilt. Oh. Now not only is he uh, guilty, mm -hmm. or he or he blames himself for not being there for Tony, mm -hmm. uh, but now he's. Oh, people are using Star Tech that aren't supposed to. Now this is my new mission. I have to make it my mission to make sure my best friend's legacy is not tarnished right. by all these hooligans. Right. Which no, it's because I know that when all of those series were announced, it was kind of interesting. Like, oh, why is this person getting a series? And that makes complete sense. Now, now it, it's it makes more sense. Which coming out of this, why Rhodey's is needs his own. See, I mean, I've always wanted a roadie series. I guess for the general public, uh, it makes it's going to make more sense now. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a very compelling story to tell, which is interesting. Absolutely. Um, and it also, I kind of... Now that we know that Rhodey potentially was a Skrull during Infinity War and Endgame, it does make sense because it always bothered me how when Tony's dying, all Rhodey... Like, Peter gets this like big moment, big with, moment with Tony and Peter and Rhodey just drops down and just gives him like a little pat on the head like rub 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 it's okay bud and it's just like I'm like dude that 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 felt so weird based off of how close they were yeah uh but now maybe it's because he was a scroll oh man oh man <laughs> dark um but again these are the questions that this series poses and right. it's questions like this that I was expecting, which, you know, I like, even though Rhodey being a scroll in this series was obvious from a mile away because he's the only big name superhero mm -hmm. in the entire series. But yeah, it does. Rhodey being a scroll for that long does raise a lot of questions. No, absolutely. Um, I know you at this point, it feels like you said a while ago, but for me, I'm with you. I think overall the series was great. Um, I'm not tied down to the comic lore as much as you are, so that doesn't factor into my take on it. I think as its own series, it's great. I do think it did lose a little bit of momentum at times, um, and I really wish a lot of things could be expanded upon. But man, did I think... I thought this was fantastic. I think it's easily one of the best of the MCU series. I agree. I agree. Definitely uh, a favorite of mine. Uh, as stronger uh, or as strong as the strongest MCU series, but overall, definitely a great series. Yeah, and at this point, because I was looking at it the other day, next up is Loki season two. Oh, really? The Marvels is not next? Uh, unless I was incorrect, I believe I saw the premiere date for Loki was October sixth. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so it it is probably next. But who knows, based off of everything that's going on in, in Hollywood, yeah. uh, until studios start paying writers and actors what they deserve, who knows, it may be postponed, but uh, blame that on the studios. Absolutely. But if everything stays where it currently is, we're going to have a jam-packed couple of months for the MCU between Loki in October, the Marvels in November, and then also Echo in November. Well, I'm here for it. And you guys know where to catch all of your Marvel content. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. And until next time, guys, stay versed.